So I'm going to talk about fitness desk. And you can see my fitness desk is a bit of a Frankenstein. I'm going to make some recommendations that are a little bit simpler to set up than what I've got going on here with this uh, desk extender. But the fitness component of it, the treadmill, this is a stepper. This is called the Sizer stepper. And then this is the fluid stance wobble board. You're going to want to alternate between the, the two two or three of these. You don't have to get all three. You could probably just get two. And then ideally, you'd like to sit as well. So this is the desk I would recommend. This is called the Flexi Spot, and it's electric. You can push, you know, four to go all the way to the top. This will be your standing setup. The width of this desk being 55 inches allows for you to have the treadmill on the left-hand side, for example, and you're either sitting or standing station on the right-hand side, and so you can alternate between the two very easily. I'm not using this one in particular just because I got my little Frankenstein set up and I'm happy with it. The treadmill, this is the Go Youth two-in-one kind of thingy. I'm going to post links to them. There is another one. This is a budget treadmill. So this is about $340. There's another one called the Go Plus. It's very popular. It's about $300. Some of these can be all the way as low as like $150 to $200. Some of them can go up to about $400, $500. The budget range tends to be between $150 and $500. So this budget treadmill here, the Go Youth, which I, after a lot of research personally, this is my favorite budget treadmill. The second runner up to me would be the Go Plus. The Go Plus, the problems that it faces is that this belt this belt drifts to the left or to the right pretty quickly out the gate after purchase. Um, so I like the Go Youth personally. It's very small. Width-wise, it fits under just about any desk. You can see that this is actually a table, like a kitchen table that I retrofitted. And so, however, like for smaller desks, that's about the size that you're looking to deal with. So this is small. This will fit under any desk. The newer Go Pluses will as well. The quality treadmill non-budget, something that is going to last longer. It's going to be quieter. It can withstand more weight. It can, the, the, the most important thing is that it can stand longer periods of extended walking. The, the high quality ones, the lifespans, they're called the gl lifespan glow ups, TR 1200, TR something else in between, and then TR 5000. And each one is just a better version of, of the last one. They're bigger, they're wider, they're heavier. However, because of that, they are just higher quality. They, they can withstand walking for a, a more extended period of time. The, the TR5000 in particular, you can walk for, it's like six to eight hours at one time without a concern on the motor, the, you know, like any heat buildup on the walking pad or anything like this. This guy, you want to walk for 30 to 45 minutes and take a break, take a one to five minute break just to let the heat dissipate. It comes with this controller. So this is quiet. Turn off all the beeping sounds. That's really nice. This is on, up, down. Let's turn it on. Beep, beep. Okay. Now we're walking. We're walking at 0.5 miles an hour. I'm going to bump this up to... I'm going to quiet it so it's not so loud. One mile an hour. This is the recommended standard walking. You're working. You're in meetings. One mile an hour is nothing. It won't break a sweat. But by the end of the day, you've done eight miles you know, give or take, obviously you're going to be taking these breaks. Um, five miles is 10,000 steps. That's the CDC minimum recommendation that everybody's trying to target, you know, counting your steps. We're always going for 10,000 steps. That's five miles. So if you go five to eight miles at one mile an hour in a working day, you have well exceeded your minimum, your, your recommendation for exercise. So you don't need to go to the gym anymore. I stopped going to the gym personally, completely. I've completely stopped going to the gym. Ever since I switched to a walking desk, now you may say, look, there's more to walk. There's more to fitness than walking. Um, me personally, you'll see, I use the sizer. This thing kicks your absolute ass. Um, so I get about 320 active zone minutes clocked every day. So don't worry about me. I don't go one mile an hour. I go 3.5 miles an hour when I'm walking. I don't necessarily recommend that speed. That is extremely fast, but I can do it. <laughs> I've been on this treadmill for two years, so... I've, I've worked up the, the, the tolerance, the stamina. Okay, so let's turn that off. So that's the controller. When you get the Go Youth, you're gonna want to, the controller is the, the biggest qualm with the, with the Go Youth treadmill. It comes, it, it, the, they sort of misfire. When you push, 
you know, this button, it goes up. You push this button, it, it mutes it. Something's wrong. The, the fix they recommend is just replace the, the battery in the controller as soon as you get the, the, the product. So you order it on Amazon, order a pair of compatible batteries with the controller and just replace the battery of the controller right out the gate. After about two years, the remote will go out. They will replace the remote for you for free when you contact them through the Amazon messaging center. And it's fine, I've had this for two years, two whole years. Everybody worries about the, the longevity of the budget treadmills. I have not experienced a single issue, not a single issue. It is a little bit loud. My gaming laptop has a bit of a crappy mic anyway, so nobody hears it in the meetings. I've, I've asked multiple times, everybody says they can't hear my treadmill no matter how loud it is, but it's a bit squeaky, a bit creaky. And of course the motor is a bit loud. These, the quality treadmills like the, the lifespans will not have that loud issue. They're, they're quieter, they're bigger, they're much bigger, so they, they might not fit under all desks. They're also heavier, so this thing you can see, what I'm gonna show you is now that you've seen the treadmill, you just grab the back part of it, okay? And you sort of lean it up, it's got wheels on the front of it, wheels on the, on the, on the, on the head. And of course, this is a lot more clunky doing this with one hand, like if I were to show you with two hands, it usually is not a problem for me, but easy peasy. Um, Cool, so now I've made room. Uh, this guy is going to be your daily driver bread and butter. The thing about treadmills is since they are electric, plugged in, you set a speed with a controller, let's say two miles an hour, that's a decent speed for working, and it moves you. It, it's the, seed, the speed is set, it moves you. So you have to just keep up, that's, that's all you have to do. And what that does is it occupies sort of the jitters part of your brain. It's really good for ADHD mitigation. By having the treadmill move you and you just keep up, this, this sort of, I don't know, there's just a part of the brain that, that remains occupied like a fidget spinner that really helps with focus. This is great for fitness and, and health, but most of all, it has helped me with focus. I have really bad ADHD. And that's the thing, that's the main reason I bought it. It has helped with focus. It's, it's almost really solved my ADHD. I, I would be so bold as to say that. When I'm on the treadmill and I'm working versus when I'm sitting, the difference is night and day. If I'm traveling and then I've, all I've got is my laptop, it's really, really hard to focus. This is by comparison to any non-electric device uh, machine that you will use for fitness. This is the, this is a stepper. This is called the Sizer stepper. I'll talk about it in a bit. But what I want to focus on right now is the way you, the way you engage this is you step up and down. You, you manually push with your foot. It doesn't, in other words, it's not automatic. It's not moving all on its own and you just have to keep up by, by physically exerting effort, you know, physical effort down, you're also mentally exerting the effort to engage the push, which is a bit of a distraction. Unlike the treadmill, which is moving you and you just have to keep up, which actually occupies that jitters part of your brain. This, you have to manually engage and is actually can be a little bit more distracting than just sitting or standing. Now, it's, I find that I still focus better on, on the stepper nonetheless. And the reason I believe is because we're getting blood flow to the brain, we're pumping endorphins throughout the day, and just the overall mental consequence of physical wellness. So when I'm on the stepper, I am still focusing better than if I'm not on the stepper. However, if I really need to focus and I'm having a hard time focusing, I will always use the treadmill. Let's say I'm just really tired that day or this is a very complex task, I will always use the treadmill. If on the other hand, I am, you know, well caffeinated, very well slept, and I'm not having a hard time focusing, or if I'm gaming, if I'm playing video games, and I'll use the sizer. Now, one benefit of the stepper is that it's more stable. When you're on the treadmill, you're sort of moving back and forth, up and down. It's a little bit, it can make um, keyboard and mouse motions a little bit more rickety. You get used to it, you really do. A lot of people worry that it's going to impact their, their precision on mouse and keyboard, it does. But you get used to it, you adjust, and, and it sort of like goes back to baseline. So you're able to compute just fine. But it's 
significantly less of an issue with the stepper. The stepper is, if you do it right, you don't move, let's see if I can keep the, 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 the camera such that the camera doesn't move at all. You just move your legs, just your legs, not, not your torso, not your body, not your hands, not your arms, and therefore there is no consequence on the keyboard and mouse. That is if you do it correctly. No, it's not, you know, it takes, it takes some mental effort to, to do it correctly, but you wanna, you wanna get used to that because that doing it correctly means better form, means better, you know, you're not gonna do damage to your knees and ankles and back. This thing, when you, you know, you're balancing, using your lower back to maintain balance while your legs are moving, puts some pretty significant positive strain on your lower back, your core, and of course your butt, your thighs, your, all your legs, you will get a, a, an incredible workout. When I'm on this, my, my heart rate on my Fitbit, I'm, I'm, I'm 90, 95 already just from showing you a, like a quick sample of this, but this will get me up to about 120 to 130 on average. That is a moderate to, I think 150 is rigorous workout. That would be the recommended, like sprinting on a treadmill basically at the gym would be 150. This has me at 130. This one typically has me at 90. So this is an actual workout. This is, you know, just, just kind of putzing. So the pros of a stepper are better stability, a, a better workout if you're up for it, and no electricity. It's very small. The whole thing breaks down. It's, it's so small, in fact, that you can travel with it. You take... I'm just gonna put this down. You take this, sorry, I couldn't show you, but I grab that, the, the pistons in the middle and then I just flop them down and it, it breaks down flat. Look at my hand, look at the size of this thing. You can throw this in, in check-in luggage and travel with it when you go home for the holidays. And you know, then you could put it on the highest setting and just use it for a workout routine. It's really, really high intensity, good workout. So not only is it small, it'll feel, fit under any desk. You don't have to worry about where your outlets are. You're not gonna be using electricity, so it's cheaper. It's a better workout. This thing is invincible, absolutely unbreakable. I, it has a five-year warranty that they, you know, they're just so confident that the thing won't break. I've really, I've really abused this thing. I've put it through the ringer. There's no maintenance necessary with a sizer stepper. There's a lot of maintenance necessary with this guy. With the treadmill, you want to lube the, the belt. What you'll do is you'll take this lube. I'll, I'll just post a link to it, but you'll take this lube and you will apply it under the belt. You'll lift up the belt and you'll put this little lube tube. You'll make a zigzag pattern of the silicon liquid. And then you'll do so on the other side too, under, under this side. And then you'll run this at one mile an hour for, you know, let's say a minute or two. You do that, they say every three months or 130 miles. I do it every Monday because I use the, the crap out of this thing. I do it every Monday morning. I apply, I apply that silicone lube. You want to, as often as possible, take off this. So you, you use a screwdriver and you take these screws out. You pull off this and then you vacuum out all the dust, okay? And then the other thing is periodically, if you get belt drift, either left or right, you'll tighten the side that it's closest to to, to re remove the belt drift. Once it starts to drift, you have to get an Allen wrench. Let me see if I can find an Allen wrench. And what you do is the side that, it's, that it has drifted towards, the side that's too tight, you'll tighten that side. It seems a little counterintuitive, but you'll tighten, you do like a quarter turn You'll leave the treadmill running for, you know, like one mile per hour. You'll do a quarter turn and you'll, and what that does is it creates like, imagine like a slope. So this one's, this side's tighter now. So the, the belt like falls down the slope towards where it wants to go towards. You do a quarter turn, leave it for 15 seconds, see if that fixed the problem. Do another quarter turn, leave it for 15 seconds, see if that, that fixes the problem and, and so on until it's fixed. And that's it. The Go Plus has a little bit of a, a belt drift problem. The Go Youth, all budget treadmills, and in fact, probably all treadmills in general, will have that belt drift eventually. Uh, the Go Youth took me about two years to develop that problem, and then I just started uh, uh, applying that fix whenever I needed to. So this does have maintenance involved. This has no maintenance involved. You'll, you'll never have to make any adjustments to it whatsoever. That's different from most steppers. There's like the Sunny Health stepper and there's a whole bunch of other popular ones out there 
that I, would, I just do not recommend them. I've owned a lot of them. I've broken all of them within, within a month, three months of use. They just can't withstand the heat. I don't know what it is about the size or what they do. They, they sort of like pride themselves on being like these airplane, you know, ex machinists who worked a lot with steel and they know, they know what it takes to make a good piston and stuff like that. That's if you go on their website, but they, they it's true. These pistons are absolutely unbreakable. The only thing I can imagine ever breaking on this thing are like right here, the, this sort of like pinch right here. I could see that maybe wearing down over time, but you can replace the various parts. Well, you can replace the two parts. You can either get one of, you know, like the, the pistons as a unit, or you can get the sh sort of the shell as a unit. So you don't have to like replace the whole thing wholesale. This is $400. $400 is the pro trainer. Do not get the personal trainer, get the pro trainer. Okay. So which one to use? If you just want to focus better and you have the space for it and you're okay with a little bit of maintenance, treadmill, definitely. If you want a better workout or you're more worried about stability of your mouse and keyboard, like if you do, you're going to use this for gaming. If you don't already have necessarily a big problem with focus, I get the sizer. Also, the difference is going to be size. Do you have the space for it under your desk? Do you have, do you have the outlets available? and like saving on electricity costs and, and stuff like that. Do not get any other stepper or bike. But like, I promise you, the Sizer is the only one that can withstand the amount of extended use. I've used this for like six hours straight once without, you know, like maybe a bathroom break here or there. It, it, it doesn't matter. Whereas the Sunny, the sunny Health Steppers and, and those other ones, they just can't take the heat buildup on the pistons. It creates something called leaky cylinder with excessive use. At first, what happens is you'll start to hear lots of creaks and, and grinding sounds, like this hissing sound. And then after a few hours, it will just, it will lose all resistance and there won't be any resistance on the down push. So it'll basically just be an entirely broken product. If you're going to get a stepper, don't get anything except the sizer. Please trust me on that one. I'm not advertising for them. I don't have an affiliate link to sizer. I do have an affiliate link for this guy. But I just, I've gone through a lot of steppers and bikes and ellipticals. I've been doing this since 2016. This is the only stepper that will, la that will last the, that, that amount of, of heavy usage. Okay, last piece is the wobble board. This is a fluid stance plain cloud. Fluid stance plain cloud. There are other wobble boards. The most popular is like the Yes for All. It's circular disc that sits on a like a ball point basically. Now the problem with that is you want to be shoulder width apart. You want your feet to be is the width of your shoulders. Okay. And the the Yes for All circular disc has you like this right in the center. It's really bad for your ankles. It's not very comfortable. So the, the, the other ones that some people will go to go for are these like, like these surfboards. This one's called the Sportineer. I actually really like this, but I wouldn't use this for work. And what they do is they put it on this, like a, a cushion. Great for learning how to surf, you know, like, like improve your balance and stamina for stand up paddle boarding or, or surfing or snowboarding and stuff. Great for training, terrible for work, absolutely so distracting. It's so hard to maintain stability. You're just all over the place. I tried it for a while. I don't know why I kind of did that. It was kind of ridiculous. So after having experimented with a lot of wobble boards, the, the fluid stance is the one that I <clears throat> prefer. Fluid stance comes in a handful of different types. The, the plain cloud has cushion on top. And that is vital for standing. When you are standing at a standing desk, you want as much cushion as you can get. Now, everybody who has stood at a standing desk, no shoes, you know, and no padding, just flat ground, and, and they, they know from experience, that just wrecks your feet, wrecks your feet. I developed Morton's Neuroma. It's actually a foot condition because I was standing. It is terrible for you. I don't understand how that movement got so popularized. So the solution a lot of people go to when they do standing desks is they, they get good, good shoes and a mat, a standing mat. You can see I, I've got some you know, makeshift 
you know, rugs and this, this little mat that I got for free. Okay, that's, that's the next best solution. Um, but standing on a flat surface is worse than sitting. Worse for sitting than your health, really, it really is. So, wobble boards come in, and what they do is I stand on both sides, shoulder width apart, and just a little bit of wobble. Like, I can maintain, I can maintain like full balance. I'm not wobbling at all with ease. The wobbling just a little bit, it's adding like a, a pseudo cushion. That amount, like the, the, the word plain cloud for fluid stance is the product line. The word plain cloud is a very good word for what's happening because you got cushion on top, you got cushion through your shoes, and then the wobble itself is a sort of cushion. It's like, it's, it's, you're not standing on some surface. You're hovering, you're hovering on a surface. So this is for when you're not active. You don't feel like being active. Um, it's better for your feet and ankles and all that stuff. It improves your posture because the amount of effort you have to put into your core and lower back in order to maintain balance is slightly above average. It actually burns calories. Evidently, it burns in some 100 to 200 additional calories uh, per day over standing all by itself. And I think that's just the core activation. So those are my recommendations. A treadmill, a stepper, and a wobble board. Never a bike, never an under desk cycler, never a, a stepper that's not sizer. And the, the, reason, the reason for, besides the quality of things like the Sunny Health devices and whatnot, besides the quality and the likelihood of them going out from leaky cylinder and all that stuff, the, the under desk cyclers, if you have you know, something over here and you're pushing it like this, the amount of mental exertion you have to put forth to engage the, the machine will just absolutely distract you. You want as little mental additional effort as possible. This is different because you step down, you start of putting weight on it. So there's a certain level of automation at play, but still, it's, it's still not quite as automatic as the treadmill. Okay. In addition to that, you want some good ergonomics. Now, I have a video on ergonomic mouse and keyboard. This is super important because when you're using a mouse, this sort of back and forth with your wrist can lead to something called repetitive stress injury, RSI. And so a lot of people will upgrade to ergonomic mouse that uses a trackball and these keys, and that you're not moving your wrist now. And then we have these split keyboards. This improves the ergonomics of the positioning of your arm. So we get about a 45 degree angle. So we have removed the motion of the wrist. However, by adding a treadmill or a stepper, less the stepper, more the treadmill, you add movement back into your wrist. If you're using a standard mouse, you're just doubling the movement of the already, already movement. If you are using one of these though, then you've brought it back down. So, Ideally, you want a ergonomic mouse and keyboard. If you're using external monitors, you want to use these arms, these uh, monitor arms, and then create a monitor cluster. And you want to, so I'm looking straight on right now. My neck is totally perpendicular to the floor. You want your field of view to be just straight down the center. So you position these monitors such that like the center line here, this, this is where I put my code. So this is where I'm looking the most. But that is really only made possible by monitor arms because if you were to use the stands that monitors come with, you wouldn't be able to position them exactly where you want. You wouldn't be able to jut them closer from the sort of the back tray of the, of the desk itself. So that is, that's it in a nutshell. Ergonomic desk, fitness desk, and when you feel lazy, wobble board.